Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to Queens of Gossip. This is episode number four. I'm here with Melissa. Is that your, did I say it correctly? Yes, Melissa. Got it. Melissa, yes. We're here. We're just going to gossip a little bit about our little ones and bringing them into the world. Um, as you guys all know, I have my one here. She's sleeping peacefully, thank God, because last night was something else. She didn't want to come off the boot for some reason. You, you know what it's like with uh, like little ones. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, mine is now teething. And it kind of oh. threw me off because she started eating on Christmas Day. And she was literally one day shy of three months. Is that normal? Oh, that's pretty early, but um, yeah. you know what? It could start early, and it could also continue on for a long period of time before the, 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 that first tooth even pops out. So. Oh, God. They're, they tend to have different childs. I, just, yeah. I kid you not, they're like a different child. But anyways, let's talk about yours. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about your children. Well, they're very different. <laughs> um, yeah. 17-year-old. You know, and it's interesting because, like, while he was growing up, I felt like, okay, this is tough. Until I had the second one, and I'm like, yeah, no, she's much more difficult to <laughs> to take care of. Oh, then I have the third one, and I'm like, okay, now these pandemic babies are completely different. Like, mm-hmm. So you're telling me you have three kids, and you said from 17-year-old, wait, what are the age gaps between your kids? So the first two is 10 years apart, and then the second two are, like, six years apart. Mm. Was there a reason why you decided to have a gap between them? Like, for instance, like 17 year old, it's totally different than having one that's like an infant. So, was there a reason why you decided to have that gap? Well, with the 17 year old, I felt like, okay, I just want one and done. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, then with the seven year old, I felt like, okay, you know, here I am. My doctor is like, okay, if you want any more children, now is your chance, you know? So, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll pop one out then. And there we go. There, that was the seven. And I'm like, okay, I'm done now for sure, guys. I'm really, really finished. Then, you know, with everything going on, I'm like, you know what? Let me just have one more so that the second one can have somebody closer in age to grow up with. So. See, I, I agree with you. I like. I think three is a magic number. I'm still working on my fiancé to be like, okay, listen, <laughs> I, I love my one child, but I'm definitely giving them another one. Once they hit 18 months, I'm ready for baby number two to be on the process. And then mm-hmm. I want baby three, and then I'm done. And yes, I want, a beautiful yes. number. Exactly, because I'm thinking, you know, if my daughter is tired of one child or one sibling, she could play with the next one. Exactly. And, you know, right? And then it's just fun. I always like the big Christmases. And, and you know, I just, I just think it's great. But my question for you, so we're going to think back to pregnancy. I want you to think, like, back to, like, your first one. And how was your experience? Like, was it... Um, like being pregnant was it difficult then because you like that was 17 years ago compared mm-hmm. to the one that you just had that's just a year were they yeah. completely different experiences like how did that go yeah well all three were very completely different um, experiences the first um one 17 years ago I was quite young I was only I think 15 oh yeah oh. so exactly yeah. however I felt like like most of the pregnancy, I didn't even feel pregnant. Like other than this growing bump in front of me, it didn't even oh. feel like anything changed. So no <laughs> so, morning sickness, no nothing. No, and oh, you got blessed. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> it really went by really easy. And even you know, um, giving birth was was pretty easy with no epidural or anything like that. No epidural. One. Oh exactly. my goodness. I don't Did know you? how it happened or why it happened, but I think it's because it's a boy. Oh. <laughs> That's just my personal See, take on it. But I have yeah. a question for you then, because out of curiosity, because when I was pregnant with my, okay, I swear I was having a boy at the very beginning until I, I learned I really wasn't. Was there any wise tales or anything that kind of gave you an idea of what you were having before you knew? Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> I tried not to even think about it until I knew for sure. And even when I did find out um, through, you know, the scans and stuff, I still yeah. felt like, you know what, I'm going to play it safe and still do everything neutral colors oh. until the actual day. See, I didn't follow that advice once. Like, <laughs> I, wa- I wanted a boy so badly. And then when I found out I was having a girl, I was like, you know what? 
That means I could play with her hair and dress her up. I was all over the stores looking for the cutest dresses and everything. <laughs> now I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I have a lot of pink. Like, Bain mm-hmm. and the other co-host would be like, your daughter is always in pink. And I'm like, I know, I swear she has other colors. But <laughs> I was looking at it. No, it's very girly and I love it. I love it. But did, did you enjoy- use Exactly. You have to have fun because like, you know, if I have a boy, it's like, okay, I'll put away her clothes and then I can have like start over again. Just pick a bunch <laughs> of boy like outfits. I'm I'm all for it. But um did you use any resources for any of your pregnancy as to like um looking at for any uh, support groups or anything? Well, with the first one I did not, um, because this was like in St. Vincent, this is in a whole different ballgame there. Oh, okay. Um, but with my second one, uh, no, I think I just kind of, cons- you know, took whatever advice my doctors gave. And, <laughs> you know, uh, there was this one thing that I followed, um, that you expect when you're expecting. It's like, uh, oh, yeah. Let's continue going. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So that was um, the only thing that like, I really took in terms of um, resources, like because it, I like the forums, like people would ask really good questions to give really good yeah. feedback. Um, so that was really good. I still follow them up to today. So, But let me um, just backtrack just one second, mm-hmm. though. You said that your first, you were, you were still in St. Vincent's? Sorry? You were, where was your first born? In St. Vincent. Okay. Was there like, was it diff? Was it was all your children born there, or was no, it just no, 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 just one? the first one. The other oh. two were born in Canada here. Yeah. Did you find it different, given because I spoke to another person before, and their experience giving birth in Saint Vincent was very different. How mm. was it for you there? It was a very different experience than it was here. Um, and I, I don't know if it may be because I was younger at that point, but I just remember mm-hmm. even when um, getting admitted into the hospital, uh, the nurse, it was strictly the nurses that took care of everything. Um, yeah. And then one of the nurses, I heard of, like people, because it's just like a curtain that was kind of blocking everything. So like sound was not something that you could avoid. So everyone mm-hmm. else around me was screaming. So I felt like, okay, it's my turn. Now oh, I have to scream, God. right? <laughs> and then mm-hmm. the nurse was like, uh, no, you're not going to do that. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so it was, but it w- wasn't a terrible experience. It really, it wasn't the worst. Like there's more scarier things that could possibly happen. Of course. It wasn't. But you said, were you alone or where is your partner? Or your, your no, I had your... my, my aunt was with me throughout the whole um pers- you know, procedure while it was mm-hmm. in there. So it wasn't, okay. it wasn't the worst. That's all. not bad then. I guess, I guess mm-hmm. a, that's a win. Cause I feel like when you have too many people inside of the delivery room with you, it just makes you more nervous. And then they tell you, Oh, try not to scream because that's where all your energy is going. But girl, mm-hmm. I don't know about that. I mean, like, I remember being in the hospital being like, Oh my gosh, I apologize. But like, I was like, Oh, I'm going to biting into pillows and biting into my hands and squeezing, trying to hold it. I feel like if you just screamed, it would have been better. Well, that's what I, with the last one, if, if the screaming came out. <laughs> yeah. The well, screaming it came out. Because well, with my it, second one, I, I, I went the epidural way. I'm like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Drugs are available. I'm taking it. Mm-hmm. So I went the epidural way. So for the third one, I was like, okay, I'm going to definitely take epidural again because that was a breeze. That felt amazing. Right? right. <laughs> that was a nice nap afterwards, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I got to the hospital too late. Mm-hmm. Oh. So by the time I got there, she's like, yeah, you're eight centimeters already. You're going to be, you know, pushing in no time. So in less than 30 minutes of being at the hospital, she came and it's like, See, they got I all don't... the screaming. <laughs> they oh. really did. And oh goodness, I'm like right here. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it because I. <laughs> no, oh my goodness, I was. I my biggest fear is me getting to the hospital too late and having to go through it naturally. I just don't have mm-hmm. any desires. I wouldn't want to have any kids after that. Exactly. None, none whatsoever. But my question to go, to top on top: When you went to the hospital, did you have your children's name already in place? For example, like my daughter, when I, (laughs) once we knew it was a girl, we knew her name. What about you? It was the same. It was the same. It was only my, my, my son that had, um, he was just baby Clark until I settled on his name. But for the girls, the girls already had their names. 
Um, what are all your kids' names? So the first one, my son, his name is Jaquan. Then I have Amelia and Khadija. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what motivated you to come up with those names? Well, the first one was really, you know, it's interesting because it was just about music at that time. Um, there's this singer that was a little bit popular at that point. His name mm-hmm. was Jaquan. So that's where I got oh, okay. that name from. Mm-hmm. Um, then for Amelia at work, there was this um, really cute little girl that I used to take off because I do childcare. Mm-hmm. And her name was Emilia with an E. And I okay. felt like, oh my gosh, that name is just so beautiful. So for all these years, I was like, I'm going to name my daughter Amelia if I have a daughter. Mm-hmm. And that's why I ended up naming her. Yeah. And then for my last one, her dad, um, he felt like he wanted to be the one to name her. So I'm like, okay, go for it. I did this already. You can have a hang at it. And then oh. he came up with the name Khadija based because of religion <laughs> reasons. So. Oh, see, that's funny because we share the same name, but mine was not because of religion. My parents, hmm. have you ever seen the show called Living Single? No. Okay. So there was this show back in the 90s called Living Single. And the main character's name was Khadija. It was actually Queen Latifah. Oh, okay. okay. Someone made that connection to me, actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm oh. like, no, that's not why. <laughs> no, because they used to be like, the way they used to say it on the show, it was kind of like like Khadija. Khadija. And then they're like, oh, my goodness, I love that name. And that's how I got my name. But yet again, everyone, I'm guessing you're back, like um, your partner's background is as a Muslim culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they, every time they hear it, they're like, that's a beautiful name. So I, mean, I oh, like man. the music. It stops, like, people stop and turn around, like, especially people from that specific culture. Every time mm-hmm. she was walking, and I said, Khadija, yeah. they look around, they're like, oh, even her doctor, she had, um, I had to take her to the hospital because she had breathing issues and her the doctor with his very like he had a long conversation oh that's a beautiful name we respect mm-hmm. Khadija so much I felt like I got an extra piece of good treatment at the hospital to be honest <laughs> right oh that's nice that, that's a beautiful that name nice, yeah yeah but sorry my daughter is nursing in the background so if you hear her that is exactly what's happening and she's getting grumpy because it's like i'm not giving her all of my attention oh, no. but mm-hmm. <laughs> but i guess you can relate your kadik is only one year old but yeah uh, yeah what stage is like what is what is something that's new going on with her like what is that like having a one-year-old after having your well, last infant <laughs> she's um closer to well she's already in the toddler stage right now she's still okay. to very soon um but right now it's everything is mine and mm. it's no 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 to everything so <laughs> it's a fun yeah. time <laughs> yeah a fun time. exactly and i think do you ever just miss back to the days where she just didn't speak you know like it's like, 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 like it's that, interesting because like, it was a different challenge because she because you know she was definitely my most difficult um, one among the three because her cause she, the breastfeeding thing she did not take to at all. No? Yeah, so at, getting up at night to make her bottles and all that stuff and she was always in a fuss, like she's always crying, there was always that going on. Mm. So even if she wasn't speaking, she was doing a lot of other things. So now the um, crying is stopped. She's sleeping through the night. Now I'm getting all the tantrums. So. <laughs> I should so laugh. Fun mom things. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. See, I, and a part of me is looking forward to when <laughs> my daughter is older so she can tell me what's going on. But I feel like yeah. she's going to be a diva. Like, she's oh, going to yeah. be like, now. Now or never. Now <laughs> or <right>. never. <laughs> but let's go back. Okay. So. I have a question for you, and mm-hmm. it might be very personal, but this mm-hmm. after having your daughter, or after having all of your kids in different stages, would you say sex is the same, or has it changed ever since you became pregnant? Um, I feel like it's still the same. I don't think that anything is really different about it. Um, no? Yeah, I still feel like, like, I guess the only thing that would have been different is, you know, time. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely feeling wise, it doesn't feel like it's different. But time is is a bit more tricky. I think, hmm. yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just I have a problem, but it's just like, I, like I'm distracted. 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm not thinking about that anymore. It's just one of those things where it's just kind of like... She's still I, pretty young, too. Right? right? So, But going back to focusing on pregnancy, during that time, was there any things that you were craving, like during foods or anything during these three pregnancies? The first one, not really. The no? second one, I, I loved a good pizza. It was pizza yeah? all the time. Pizza <laughs> and toast, really weird. <laughs> Was nothing wild. Know. There's definitely no pickles going on. What were your what, what did you have to have on your pizza? Uh, it didn't really matter. It was more like the bread piece of the pizza, like the actual dough piece of the pizza is what Ooh. did it for me. <laughs> it's weird. Not, I'm not gonna lie, I was very similar. I needed my like I liked veggie pizza. I didn't care what was on it, as long as it's not pineapples. I cannot do pineapples mm. on pizza, but I was eating pizza, like, um, oh, what's it called? Gino's pizza, like crazy. And if it wasn't that, it was Domino's. And I had a thing for um, KFC wings. I just like chicken Ooh. for some reason, like a lot of chicken. Yeah, maybe that's that, interesting because, you know, with right? the meat thing, you'll think, okay, maybe it's going to be a boy with all this meat. Right. <laughs> and then everyone was like, oh, if you like sweets, it's going to be a girl. But if you like salty, it's a boy. And mm-hmm. at the very beginning, I wanted salty everything. And I didn't want anything to do with meat. I didn't want home cooked meals. Mm-hmm. The smell of food, the smell of the apartment, everything was disgusting. Mm-hmm. Right? But but it was something about, like, fine food was my thing. I lived off of the road for yeah. my entire pregnancy. I was just, don't cook. It's just a texture of meat. It was disgusting. But if it was cooked already, I was ready to go. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But do you have any fun stories or anything that happened throughout your pregnancies? Like, for example, for mine, I was pregnant with my daughter, as I mentioned before, and puking was a thing for me. And you never knew when it was coming. And I remember mm-hmm. drinking a whole blue, like a lot of orange juice and being like, all right, I think I'm getting a little cold. Let me overdose myself with orange juice and puking it all up on my clothes oh my at church, which I mentioned in a podcast before, but that was kind of like the highlight where I'm like, okay, my child's not going to like church. Oh, no. Because every time I wanted to go to church, something would happen. Something else would happen. But then yet again, she's the complete opposite. So she loves it. But do you have any stories that happened while you were pregnant that they were like, whoa, I'm going to have a blast with this child? <laughs> well, that was pretty much my, the last one. Like, yeah. throughout the, like all my nights, I just felt like a walking zombie at work because I couldn't sleep at night. Mm-hmm. Like you lit on one side I'm like oh gosh my groins everything was always in pain like I took oh. so much time off with her I'm like yeah she's definitely going to be the one <laughs> she really was and then it's funny enough because she came three weeks early yeah but what was your plan it was um, May sometime she came on the 25th of April but it was May okay. and um, for the week before I gave to birth I Jumps so up that I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm wet. I'm gonna go to the hospital. So I'm telling my son, I'm going to the hospital because um, I think my water just broke. And it's my third one. You would think I'm gonna do better, but it was just because of this big gush that came out. So I went to the hospital, got checked, and they're like, no, you're fine. There's definitely nothing wrong. I'm like, but it was really? clear. It wasn't pee. I know I didn't pee myself. And they're like, yeah, but it's there's no no fluids there that's indicating it. Um, the water breaking and when I should exactly so that when I showed up there now um, Saturday because here I am I'm actually you know in labor now and my, they had to end up still breaking my water so that was like oh, an interest because now everybody has like, oh she peed her bed that's what happened I really did it and then they 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 like games. <laughs> yeah they played games and she was like oh, I'm gonna give you a Exactly. But how actually happened with Asians? Yeah, I'm never gonna forget her name. Do you ever want to have more children, or like yo, she's my donezo? That's it. I feel she's my donezo, man. She she steals it from me. <laughs> <laughs> that was just proof. It's not getting any easier out there. <laughs> Do you mind just like again? Do you mind sharing? How old are you? I'm 32. Okay, so 
Yeah, that, I think that's a decent age. I think that's really if you have three already and you're kind of, like, I feel like I'd be content at 32 being completely done. And you being more of an experienced mom than I am, okay? And because mm-hmm. you have three, so you've seen them in various stages. Do you have any advice for any first time moms? I would just probably say don't. It makes no sense to read up on how you do it. it mm. Your child is going to be completely different. Because, and as I said, like even with the three, they were all three different experiences. Because yeah. even after, you know, with the third one, you think, okay, I don't need um, <laughs> to be looking up for anything. I still Google things like crazy. Yeah. Because she had different things that the first two never experienced. So, and and my next piece would be always ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. There's no shame in this game. No, <laughs> really, it takes a village, and you were not lying. It really, it really do. Well, again, I just wanted to quickly just because we have to wrap it up, but I wanted to say thank you so much for taking your time out just to have this conversation with me and you getting to know you just a little bit. And uh, again, again, please stay tuned. Everything, um, like, subscribe, and recommend to a friend who could be featured on the show as well. Again, thank you again for listening, and I hope you guys have a great one.